there, but if somebody comes up to them personally and, and that's hands, the best way to do hands it. them an Oath Keeper mm -hmm. card or something like that, next time you may do something, you think of that moment that you, you, somebody touched you, right. and then they think of that. So you can tell somebody, hey, obey the Constitution. Yeah, whatever. And they just walk about their business. People right. tell cops that all the time. But if somebody actually came up to them with his ideas and these ideas and said, hey, gave him a car, and then that kind of interaction will stick oh, with yeah. somebody a lot longer. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, how do you get just like in that. touch with these? No. Just, just here's what I always, our, our, um, our modus operandi. It's about tonight. officers, not, not police officers, but uh, <laughs> Marines and those right. people. Well, you, the best people to go talk to them are the veterans. No, no, no. Guys if, I to, if I wanted to touch somebody that has went to Iraq and back, or I, how do, do I go on? Can you go on a, a base? Can it, how do you oh, interact oh. with these people? Well, you can, you can do that. I mean, another good idea that, that came up recently on our forums that we need to really expand on is, is putting up bulletin boards. You know, go put up the board, go put the bulletin board up. You know, you outside, outside of the base. Honor your oath. You know, defend the Constitution and lead, lead into our website and we'll do the rest. And the testimonies on our website are good too. They're pretty powerful. You know, and, and, and if you guys know any current serving, it's really your duty, frankly, to go and talk to them man to man, personally. You know, because you have a tremendous effect on them. So all those ways, just like you do anything with, like in social media, you know, any kind of fad or, or anything that's out there, you know, for multiple, multiple angles. That video that a buddy of mine made, he was a you know, kind of like an amateur you know, video maker during the Ron Paul campaign. And he made a pretty kick, but you know, the Ten Orders video that, that he made is awesome. So, I mean, I've heard stories of like, you know, grown Marines crying <laughs> watching that video. That's so a pretty powerful, pretty powerful tool. So we use all those things, you know. YouTube, like what you do on YouTube is, is important. I think they, they go on YouTube. They go on there all the time. Well, the thing is, when you, you know? try, you don't know what the result is. You if it, if yeah. it, but it may come to somebody. It's like the story of the kid doing the starfish. It's no, I was, I was just wondering, know, is there a specific way you gotta, you gotta try. to maybe get on a, a base or something where you could touch in, Have a, lecture in, at a, a, a lot of these folks at one particular time? Well, if there's any the, tricks you know of. or, or yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's difficult. Like, uh, we were going to be a sponsor for the best ranger competition. They accept our money and everything. Yeah. And then the last minute, command mm -hmm. pulled the plug on it. They didn't want us there. No, so someone higher up at Fort, Fort, Fort Bennett pulled the plug. Yeah. Did you Why? That? Well, we're you really know that dangerous? Yeah. So, you got to get them outside the base. You're not going to hey, get terrorists. Base. You're a terrorist. I, hey, we have support of them. You know you do it. We, you, know, we, you get a current serving Marine, you go and talk to his buddies. And you know, it's, it's happening. You get guys, like there was one guy in the Ron Paul forums who's in, Af in Afghanistan at 101st Airborne, and he's talking to his pals and running around with an oath keeper tab on. He's outside the wire, he wears an oath keeper tab. So that's how it, it just spreads, and just like anything else does. That's why I love the internet and social media and all those things. We've got to use them all. So just, you know, you think of something. Whatever works. It's guerrilla, it's like guerrilla journalism. I understand. I yeah, thought yeah. maybe if you knew a specific <clears throat> example, like, Oh, you can get can get on a military base if you talk to this guy and this and this is how you set it up. I don't know any of that, so I was wondering if yeah, you do what you can. I mean, you know, we've had we've had current serving officers who you know protest kind of behind the scenes and check us out, and then they go spread the word their, their own way and formally. It's all scuttlebutt. I already got an idea. Now we can we can do this probably tomorrow. There's a or Monday. There's a recruiting center, so just. Yeah. Walk into the recruiting yeah. center. Sure. You know what? I, I know a couple of recruiters who had our 10 orders up on their wall. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. So and like, each recruit let me ask you one really yeah. tough question. Yeah, go ahead. This is going to be really tough. All right. How are they upholding their oath when they, they are, overseas. when they are illegally, unlawfully, unconstitutionally invading and occupying foreign nations? We don't. We stay neutral on that because I want to reach all the guys that are right there. I understand. There. Okay, that's why we stay neutral on that. Hey, I'm a constitutionalist. Yeah. Right. I work for Ron Paul. We don't stay neutral on that. What do you think? <laughs> no, I. I, I know. That's about a great board? answer. I, I, well, just, I figured you'd go there. That's but right. you know, look, I want to reach them all, and yeah. Step by step. War should be declared, mm -hmm. but more importantly, I don't want them shooting us when they come back. Yeah. Right. And they're emotionally wrapped up and they're in the middle of a war. Question answered. 
So, yeah. That's so, that's what we stay, you know, that's my own personal opinion, but we stay neutral on that because we're reaching them all. Perfect answer. Because when the third, the third ID, the first combat brigade of the third ID that is now assigned here came from there. Mm. They came back here. And I just had a conversation the other day with a lieutenant in the first combat brigade of the third ID. So, I want to keep those, those you know, lines of communication. Right. Lines. So, anyway, yeah. What about uh, going to like a veterans hospital and doing <coughs> outreach there? How, sure. How, how, can I mean, you is that do? something we could? I mean, would you have to say, "Hey, can I go visit some veterans?" Or how would that work? Or they love to get visits. It's you, fun. Have you been there? Have you been? There? Yes. So is it? It's considered public property, right? Yes. And then, you, I mean, you know, they they like getting gifts and and, and you know things like that. You I would do a soft sell. I wouldn't go in there and say, I'm coming in here to talk about, you know. Right. Go in, we're going in here to visit and talk to, old, to the veterans. Well, it's good. Yeah. They, they like, one That'd of my daughters good. went down That'd to the VA good. hospital Very to good. Good. run a bingo game for them. I mean, they like having volunteers come down and do stuff. Don't go down there in your brown shirt and start, you know, <laughs> it's, brown you know, shirt. you have to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brown <laughs> shirt. I'm a brown shirt or not. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm what I'm saying is if you go in there with this militant <laughs> attitude that I'm going to, you know, yeah, you, know, you won't be welcome. Bro, you, you go there, like the best ranger competition, and we said, hey, we just want to support it. We had rangers, retired rangers who were in our organization, mm -hmm. and some current serving rangers that were all into it. They were up, they were on it. We were going to have a blast. I'm an ex-paratrooper. I was at Benning. I was going to go down there and have this thing where you like wrestle in the mud pit. I was getting myself ready for that. I was going to have a good time. You know, I'm out of shape and fat, but I was going to go anyway. <laughs> but we were looking forward to it. Then they pulled the plug on us. It was really disconcerting. We had a special forces retired Rex McTeer um, uh, major who was really upset. He was the one putting that together. So it was it was the higher up, the brass, that pulled the plug, not the rank and file. They were down with it. They, they love us. So anyway, um, we're making headway. It, it's just it's a tough fight, but I just can't rely on that. I just can't. It's just not enough. So we really kind of have to. We're going to kind of put our necks out a little bit by doing this and advocating, you know, like like say for example, the revitalization or of a county militia, state militia. I'm sure the you know the uh, SPLC, yeah, this <laughs> SPLC is going to be a badge of honor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but, but, it, but it might you know it, it could to be to be honest, it could affect our ability to reach, you know, DOD personnel, they could say, well, look, we are a militia. Yeah. Like, hey, look, we're advocating for, that's what we're going to be very careful about, advocating for it. The militia is a public body. Yeah. When it's private, it's the, it's the it's neighborhood right. watch. Now, do I think it's okay for guys to go start their own militia? Yeah, I do. If, if your county's not going to do it, then right. what's wrong with you doing it? But I'm not going to call that a militia because I want to keep the two things separate and distinct. That way we can't be, you know, it's a strategy, mm -hmm. put it that way. You know, and Dr. Vieira has a point that if you have a public body, you now have sovereign immunity. Mm -hmm. And the governor can outfit you with all kinds of stuff that you couldn't have as a private individual. And he's got to do it. So, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know um, what kind of reception did you get from the media coverage that you've been getting? Are you kidding? They know they're, trying to, they're, trying, they're trying to make you look really bad. Yeah, I'm like the, like he's your, a hero. So I want to know if the people saw through it or were they... Yeah, I, that's well, what I knew even on the South Bronx. You know, like I was telling Ernie Hancock today on the show, and I wrote an article recently about this, you know, there's, there's a cycle in American politics that when your party's out of power, you're receptive to the liberty message. You can hear it because you're concerned about those bad guys that are in power that are not your guys. And when your guys are in power, this is, I'm talking about the mainstream Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. they flip positions and then the Democrats are worried about the Constitution <coughs> and the Bush administration. And it's the, you know, the neocons were like, you know, Bush could do nothing wrong. He's, he really does right. You know, and then now that it's been flipped, now Obama mm -hmm. to the Democrats is God. He can do yeah, nothing right, wrong. Right. And if you, if, you, if you even question him, you're, you're a racist, you're a crazy person, a conspiracy theorist, or you're a terrorist, or a traitor. It's changeable. It's one part. Yeah. Well, but, but like I told Hancock today, that's not quite true anymore in America because of, you know, the Ron Paul Revolution, and libertarianism, and the bomb Institute, <coughs> and the internet. What about the restart republic? Well, any of these things. But because of, the because of, because of all of, because of all of the, you know, the, the, um, free flow of information. It's kind of like go back to Martin Luther again. We got military. It's like the it's like the it's like the printing press. Okay, when the printing press came out and was no longer <laughs> monks writing down each copy of the Bible, but anybody can get it. Right, free flow of information. 
That's what Martin Luther did. That was the that was the revolution then. The religion. Same thing goes now. The uh, interviews are pretty impressed. Yeah. All the documents. Are I know. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't. I haven't seen the proof yet. You want to email it to me? Go right ahead. But I just I'm not convinced. So, but you're free to email it to me. Okay. I'll take a look at it. But no judge I've ever known. I've known a lot of federal judges and state judges has ever said, "Oh, they contract with us. That's why we can do this." Now they always go, "No, the Commerce Clause and all this other kind of stuff." So, but you know, if you can convince me, then I'll listen. I mean, I'll listen anyway. But you can, if you can yeah. convince me, fine. Right. So anyway, but um. Where was I? What was I talking about? <laughs> what was I talking about? I have no place to place it. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, there's a growing third part of the population that doesn't care whether they're a Democrat or Republican, <clears throat> doesn't care who's in power. They're consistent, you know. That's your libertarian, your, your Chuck Baldwin, you know, Constitution Party, <coughs> um, your, you know, sincere conservatives, like Barry Goldwater style conservatives. Like, let me get one last story. Um, when I was uh, working for the Ron Paul campaign in, in Nevada, I was, you know, managed to get on the platform committee. Well, they sure regretted that. So, I, so it was, a, it was a few Ron Paul folks on the platform committee. Only about four of us. Four out of about 18 people were actual Ron Paul Republicans. The rest were not. And they could not agree with Ron Paul on the war. That's what they just couldn't get over that. That's why they couldn't support him. But they agree with them on everything else. We got a plank to repeal McCain-Feingold, a plank to repeal the, the Military <coughs> Commissions Act, once I explained it applied to citizens too, a plank to repeal the Patriot Act, once we explained what was wrong with it, a plank for jury nullification, and once I explained the full power of the jury in the Zanger case and the, the Penn case from back in England. Once they understood it, they were for it. Because the war was the only thing, it was a very emotional issue, that you couldn't get over that. But they were with us on everything else. And we produced like the most radical Republican plank probably in, in history. You know, because it was, it was like hardcore. And people were like, oh yeah, a Ron Paul plank. I said, no, that's not right. It was not a Ron Paul plank. It was a constitutionalist plank. Okay? Those folks were constitutionalists, even though they weren't Ron Paul supporters. So that really kind of opened my eyes. I was like, well, holy cow. The rank and file out there, especially in rural America, is still very sincere uh, constitutionalist. All you got to do is, is clear away the wool over their eyes and the neocons to put over them. And they're there. And so that's what we're seeing now. So there is a, there is a battle, no doubt about it, the Dick Armies and other, you know, and Newt Gingrich and, and oh my God, he, he's, he's like a zombie. He keeps coming back and zombie. <laughs> you know? And these, these sell out treasonous fake conservatives are trying to steer the Tea Party and is simply voting for them again. And we're here I know zombies that would take offense at that remark. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good, honest zombies are offended. Everyone. <laughs> so anyway, but that's, that's sort of internal battle right now inside the Republican Party and inside the Tea Party. And, you know, it's up to you whether, you think it's, whether it's worth it or not. I know some pretty sincere patriots who, who had it for the Republican Party and they don't want no more to do with it. They're, they're going to vote constitutionalist from now on. They're going to go constitution party. So, but I know some that think it's worth it. And it might be different in different places. In Montana, I think it's worth it. We've got a lot of serious constitutionalists part, part. in the Republican Party. All of Montana. We have about 20, at least a block of, of 20 out of 60 in the House of Representatives are hardcore constitutionalists. Every what about bit the governor? Of, the governor, no. He just kind of goes with the wind. But he signed that main Montana gun bill because he knows where his bread is buttered. How He's did the guy idiot. get to be governor? Mm -hmm. it's like, it's <clears> It, Montana, like a lot of the places, is kind of split. And here's the other thing. The Republican Party cut its own throat during the Bush years. And frankly, they deserve to be cast out of that. Not the Democrats deserve to be put in, but you know what I'm saying. They cut their own throat. Keep in mind, however bad it may seem in Montana or Arizona, Bryce and I here are from California. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're sorry what our state has done to everyone. Uh, what are you going to move? You got to move. Well, yeah. Yeah, someone's got to be in the belly of the state. state Everyone's a franchise. <laughs> you know, this, 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 that just reminds me of something. You guys heard, you heard of the free, free state? Yeah, yeah, right? we love them. Yeah. I mean, I was in that because I was, I was at Yale at the same time and Jason Soren was there. He was a history, history PhD and I was a law student. 
And we, my wife and I signed up for it, but then we, we opted out of all the East Coast states. We're like, you got the nuts to yeah. pick one of those states. So we picked Montana, that's why we moved to Montana. So that's our own little version of the Free State Project, is to go to Montana where 